our programs as well. And that we have a, a great deal to do with the industry, as I'll, I'll show you when we're looking at accreditation, and also the construction of our program shows um, a lot of collaboration and, um, and with industry. And we've just come out of another um, uh, a, a phase of our development where we've discussed things with industry again and uh, addressed some of the things that they want. So we're constantly trying to up update those and we've also have, um, we're very academically focused so we know both about industry and, and the um, requirements of, ac uh, of academia. So, so we have a strong research focus also. Um, in terms of um, our school particularly rather than just uh, the university, we've got nearly 2,000 students. Um, and that means not only are we by far the largest provider of um, uh, LIS education or information education in Australia, but also in the world, which I always think is quite surprising and I quite like the idea that um, uh, this is um, something that we can be quite proud of. That also means that we've got 20 teaching staff um, and those staff are from all sorts of places and they are also come from a variety of backgrounds which means they have uh, interests in a really broad area, uh, area of the um, information industry. So we have um, people who are interested in knowledge management, we have people who are interested in archives, we have people who are interested in information architecture, um, in social media, in, in, uh, in uh, any aspect of the um, industries that you can think of. So it, it, the, the size in itself is not um, I suppose that important except that what it does give us is this um, opportunity to put, employ a large number of staff and also that means we can deliver a, a great um, a variety of um, subjects and as I will talk about soon, specialisations. Um, I was reminded that we have uh, 40 years of experience because I did have 30 and, and it's just ticking around to the 40th year of, um, uh, uh, of the school and that means it's been going for quite a long time. Um, I haven't been there for 40 years but um, sometimes I think some people have. And then um, it also means that um, depending on what part of the course that you do or what, um, what program you undertake, there are some uh, ways that you can broaden your employability and um, address a, a variety of aspects of the industry once again coming down to that capacity through size and staffing. In terms of professional recognition, I know this is really important. Um, it's important both to people who are undertaking the, the program, but also um, for you know think, things to consider when you might want to travel or work overseas. So we had the pro, all the programs are recognised by the Australian Library and Information Association. Uh, they're also uh, recognised by the RIM Professionals of Australasia, which is the Records Management Group. Um, and then if you are interested in specialising in records and archives, we have um, recognition for our programs from the Australian Society of Archivists, the ASA. And that, as you can imagine, gives a lot of credibility to the uh, program, but it also provides you with a lot of uh, good outcomes in terms of um, your future and your future careers and the flexibility um, of your careers as I'll explain. If you are looking to work overseas, and people often ask me this question and sometimes it's in reverse, so if you are from overseas, we have got reciprocal arrangements with the Australian Library and Information Association, with the UK Chartered Institute of Library Information Professionals, the ALA, CLA, Canadian Library Association and also um, one I haven't listed here which is Lianza, the New Zealand Library and Information Association. Now um, there are uh, variations in this, the undergraduate program is recognised in the UK, um, our master's programs are, as is the master's program, our master's program um, is recognised by the ALA and CLA and that's because uh, in Northern America, North America, um, a master's degree is the entry point for professional um, recognition. So it's a slight cultural difference, 
um, you find across um, the globe. So uh, essentially countries that such, a, uh, such as New Zealand will recognise a bachelor's degree, but um, that, that North American group recognise master's degree. So that's just if you are thinking about your uh, recognition, travelling to the far flung um, parts of the world, which is always um, fun, I think, or I'd like to do. Okay. This is a list of the programs. I'm not going to talk about all of uh, all of these at the moment, um, but so you can see that we have a range of programs, and also that um, I'm not sure if any of you are. Uh, uh, teachers, but you may have been considering perhaps um, a Master of Education in Teacher Librarianship or a, um, another a program that's brand new, which has been highly successful, which is Master of Education in Knowledge Networks and Digital Innovation. I won't be addressing those two programs at all, um, and, but if you have questions about the, those, I'm sure they can be answered um, as, uh, as soon as we can. So, if you you know, just let us know what you know, want to know. Um, well, I'm going to be talking about the Bachelor of Information Studies and the Master of Information Studies. Um, as you can see there, there's also the Graduate Certificate in Audiovisual Archiving, which is a small specialist course that, once again, if you have um, questions about that, that's fine. We can answer those. The other programs within that group are subsets of the Bachelor or the Masters of Information Studies, so will be addressed um, through the program. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are interested in bachelor's degrees or how many of you are interested in the master's degrees, but um, I'll go through the, the programs and tell you a little bit about, about them. There is a little complication, and that complication is that as a result of that industry consultation that I was just talking about, as of 2015, there are some um, major um, changes to our programs which will have an impact on um, uh, the subjects you undertake and also um, in the case of the master's program, the length. Um, that for those of you uh, thinking about your master's degree, uh, this might be a good opportunity to think about enrolling in 2014 and I'll explain that when I get to it. So something to consider. Okay, uh, the biz, the bachelor's degree is equivalent to three years full time um, and we only teach by distance with one exception in the bachelor's degree only which is a residential school that we have right at the beginning and this is uh, something of, of long um, terms, uh, long standing and has proved to be very um, successful. So I will talk about that a little bit more but just to make sure that you're aware that while there it is a distance program, there is this um, one exception where we ask you to um, come to the university, to that um, beautiful campus that I was just talking about. Um, now you'll see that I've got 2014 enrolments only and that is because the um, after our extensive consultation with the industry we've made a number of changes. If you are enrolling in mid-year, um, in 2014, this is the con this is what your course will look like. Now, it, the course hasn't been lengthened um, at all. What has happened with the new course is that we've made some adjustments to compulsory subjects. So, if you're enrolling in 2014, you have a core of 16 subjects, and you have 10 electives, which is a total of 192 points. Um, we suggest a maximum of two subjects per session, um, but if people are not working, have no responsibilities, are uh, footloose and fancy free, and of whom I would be very jealous, um, then we might you would email me and get my permission, and, and I would consider letting you do one more subject probably in the first session. See how you fare with that because it's often uh, much harder than people realise. And then um, uh, you might be able to do uh, another subject. Another reason people ask for permission to do more is to um, meet require, you know, requirements for um, uh, Centrelink and things like that. So let me know um, uh, if that is something that you need to consider, but only once you've enrolled. Um, we still strongly emphasise that two subjects is probably the um, by distance is probably the best approach. So, 
Okay, so here we go. This is the, the course as it stands now um, and you can see that there's a number of subjects um, that make, it, make up our core subjects, which means these are the common subjects that everyone needs to do. Um, you'll see that there is a, the residential school which has no points um, but is still compulsory. And then you have your professional study visit and professional placement and um, their four point subjects. So um, they are generally done closer to the end of your course, particularly professional placement because we like you to have a, a toolbox of skills to bring into the workplace if you don't already work there. Um, the professional study visit is a bit more flexible. What that is is you go out and I've just finished one in Melbourne and it was fantastic. We visit um, probably oh, three libraries a day uh, or it doesn't have to be a library, it can be an archive, it can be um, a records unit, whatever it happens to be that we've organised and it gives you a bit of a feel for areas that people might like to work in. And that often is um, a point where people sort of into their, into their course a bit go, oh I thought I wanted to work with children, now I've changed my mind, I've seen them or something. That tends to be the most common um, response. So um, the subjects as you can see are pretty broad ranging. Um, it's their foundation subjects and they're ones that give you a really nice um, uh, uh, you know, round off your, or introduce you to the profession. So. Um, in 2015, and I must admit this is brand new, it's only just gone through, so I am hoping I, I know. Um, I've written it all down so I don't forget, but you will see the change that has occurred is that if you enrol in 2015, the core subjects have been reduced and the number of electives has increased. So the number of points um, stays exactly the same. You're not doing any more subjects. What we um, have concluded from our discussions with industry is that a little bit more flexibility with electives might allow people to um, follow um, a few different streams more effectively. Um, you could do electives, um, this in the 2014 model, but this is this is the difference. So instead of 16 um, core, there's 11 and then there's more electives. Um, another major change that we have made to 2015 is one that actually came about through discussion with our student group um, amongst others and it was to um, introduce a really um, robust introduction to the professions um, and um, so we have as the very first subject the residential school immediately followed by a, um, uh, a 16 point that is a, a, a double subject um, so that we can give you a really good grounding in um, lots of things including you know essay writing, referencing, but also a really strong introduction to the profession. And that is a subject that everyone do, uh, does. I can see that someone's asked a question about um, uh, library technician programs and I am actually going to answer that a little bit later, um, so uh, it, that will be covered. Uh, all students though will have to do these. So that's the difference between um, this year's enrolments and next year's. You, you will still have to do the same number of subjects, it's just how those subjects are constructed is slightly different. And then the next um, thing is that we have um, in this our introductory subject um, which all students will do at the beginning, no one get, will get credit for that, um, will be much more robust and provide a lot more contact with students. We're quite excited about it, we think it's going to be a really, really good um, introduction for students and really strengthen your experience and that's, that's coming straight from the students themselves who were the ones that flagged this as a, as a good idea. Uh, as I keep saying, it has been designed in consultation with um, industry and that's one of our strengths. One of the things that came from that consultation in the past and which we're carrying forward is the fact that you can, if you wish, um, specialise. Now you can specialise in librarianship um, 
information and knowledge man and management and records and archives. So one of those three, not all, not all of all of them. Um, two important factors. One is that you can choose to specialise in one of the three areas, or you can select from across the streams to and get a general's degree. So it doesn't matter. That's up to you. The vast majority of people. Um, uh, choose not to specialise, um, but some people will have a firm and clear idea of where they're heading in the industry and so they choose to specialise. Uh, that particularly seems to be the case with um, people in the records and archives area, so that might be um, uh, of, you know, important. Now someone's just asked me about mid-year, but deferred, it would if you've deferred to 2015 you will be under the new system. So, um, and uh, and that's why it's really good that you're here to hear some of those uh, discussions. Okay, and and put, I have put in brackets there. Doesn't matter if you specialise or not; they are all um, uh, recognised by ALIA. And of course, as I said, the records and archives also by Australian Society of Archivists. Um, 2014 specialisations, um, you can see of course that the changes that we've done uh, for the, uh, the 2015 NTEC don't apply. So these are the specialisations as they stand now. The actual specialisations haven't changed, librarianship, information and knowledge management and records and archives management remain. It's what's constructed or how they're constructed has obviously changed because we've changed the core um, elective um, makeup. And of course, all of this information is at, on our website, so you can go back and, and check this um, if it's all a little bit too quick for you. And I think, uh, I'm pretty sure a recording of this will also go out to everyone. Um, 2015, as you can see, the specialisations remain the same. The only difference is that the um, arrangement of how you do the subjects. Now, I'm not expecting everyone to take this on board right now, um, but it is worth just noting that there will it will be um, slightly different in how you go about it because we've changed the core component of subjects, so there are more electives around. Honestly, I can tell you about it, but really until you're enrolled, it's not going to be of concern to you, um, and then you can study really hard or ask me lots of questions. I'd rather not confuse you. As I keep um, uh, telling you, there's um, a compulsory res residential school. I'm going to stress that it is compulsory. Um, some people, if you live in um, uh, uh, overseas, I don't know where you're all from, um, we might we have alternate activities for people. There may be circumstances, and and this has occurred. We've had people, for example, who've been breastfeeding, um, and who, for whom it would be very difficult to attend at the right time. So there are two options. We have um, the most common um, that we suggest and and let make you do is to come to the later one, which is in the middle of the year. It, it um, tends to, to um, get rid of the uh, uh, stress on people, but it does mean that you are doing an introductory program in the middle after you've already undertaken some academic um, programs, but if that makes your life easier. If circumstances mean, uh, means that what it, for whatever reason you can't attend either, on very rare occasions we can discuss it and see um, what we can do. So please don't let the idea of a residential school put you off. Um, it is fantastic. It is for everybody that has ever attended, um, I've, we, we get the most fantastic feedback from people and that includes people who, who you know, grumbled perhaps about having to attend. So it is a really positive experience. You get to meet the, the staff who you may not get the opportunity to meet the staff again. Um, you get to meet me which is I'm sure very exciting and um, you get to meet each other which is the really empowering um, uh, thing. Now somebody's saying if you can't, you're starting in July and you can't attend the residential school, um, you can uh, do it at another time. But I suggest before we make a decision about that, um, Stephen, just contact me and we'll work um, work on it from there. Um, we, of course, a new job is 
extremely important. So we want to support that as much as we can as well. So just let me know in, in that instance um, and we'll see what we can do. Um, in the 2014 and 15 um, iterations of, this, of the course, there are um, three practical subjects. Um, so there's professional pla uh, placement um, and, a, and the, and the four-day um, study visit um, and the development of um, what we call um, uh, a, a portfolio, which I'll explain. Um, in terms of credit, which I said I was going to address, um, we've got um, library technicians, um, as you can see, it says more than 50%, but I'm fairly sure, though I didn't want to write, put it in writing, it's about 70% of our undergraduate program are former library technicians. And you do get um, a substantial credit into your program, the equivalent of a year, um, and then if in terms of um, professional placement, which is the most common question I get asked, you are um, wish to apply for credit for that. I will consider it, but there are parameters of, uh, which I take into account, and that is that you have worked at a, manage a management level um, or equivalent. You have worked in more than one agency type, so if you've only ever worked in a school or a public library or an academic library, I'd be looking at um, what your experience has been in that organisation if and if you have worked at more than one um, organisation, because what we're trying to do is give you a breadth of experience. Um, but if you do feel that you fall into those um, categories, then um, you're more than welcome to um, put in an application for credit for those and I will give it every consideration and, um, and let you know what the outcome is. Um, the uh, credit here that is, is 64 points, um, the one that I've listed three core and five elective subjects um, is for um, the, the current intake, but this number, the amount of credit hasn't changed, so we're still giving the same amount of credit. So you'll get 64 points, um, and it will depend, just depend on um, when you enrol, but also when you received your um, Diploma of Library and Information Services. Um, there is there is a slight differences in in those as well. Okay, this is a 2014 study schedule. So, for example, if you're um, enrolling in session one, um, you, you can see what people would do. If you're enrolling in session two, you will be doing um, INF 100 and 109 um, and then the possibility perhaps doing some other subjects. So it just um, varies depending on um, uh, at what point you enrol. And we have all of the um, uh, enrolment patterns um, and suggested subjects uh, which we give to you during residential school, but it once again is also available on our website. So you can have a look at what our suggestions are for your enrolments. Now one thing uh, before I start um, moving into talking about the Masters of Information Studies um, is that if you are um, and this happens quite a bit and it's, uh, it particularly fills me with delight. Um, uh, many people who have started off with their diploma, um, they will um, uh, then go on in a, in a little while and they do their undergraduate degree and then they get so brave and so excited by the industry that they go on and do their Master of Information Studies. And um, I won't um, stress uh, this at the moment because it may be a bit early, but um, there is also some substantial credit for um, people who have got an, an undergraduate degree in library and information studies going into a master's program. It makes it a very achievable and very exciting um, process. So if that's sort of your long-term goal, um, please um, keep that in mind. 
Um, this is the Masters program now. So for those of you amongst you who are interested in the Masters, I'll go through the 2014 firstly and then the um, fairly major changes that have happened as a result of government policy for 2015. And so the consideration is whether um, uh, that um, is something that you need to bear in mind in terms of your applications or information that you need. So you can see that we have a 96 point um, uh, course at the moment which is essentially a year and a half full time if people were doing that and you can see what it constitutes. So we've got a core once again and we've got specialisations and what you will find and it's one of the exciting things too about people who move from the biz into the MIS as well is that we have more specialisations which I'll talk about in a minute so you can pick up two if you take that pathway. Um, so what we've got at the moment for people who enrol in the middle of the year and with the Masters program we also have a, an end of year, uh, not an end of a third session um, intake. Um, so you will fall under this current regime which is a 96 point um, 18 month essentially um, course and you can see once again we have um, professional study visit, professional placement and then a core um, of subjects. Now the important thing to realise about both this intake and 2015 is that upon completion of the core um, you will be able to graduate if you wish with a graduate diploma of information studies and that Graduate Diploma of Information Studies is the first professional entry point so you, uh, for um, ALIA, which means that you can work as a professional, an information professional in a library as a librarian, to use old fashioned language, and um, with that qualification. Now I'm stressing that because sometimes um, studying is, is hard and so there is nothing to stop you if you find that it is difficult um, to continue to try and, and make it to the graduate diploma level um, and, um, and then come back at a later stage perhaps and finish off the master's degree if that's what you're hoping to do. So just bear that in mind, those of you interested in the master's program, that there is an earlier exit point which is recognised by the Australian Library and Information Association which might provide some um, flexibility um, in terms of um, how you conduct your course. Now the large change, I say that with a little sigh, the largest change um, for the Masters for 2015 is that we have according uh, in, to meet uh, government um, requirements moved to 128 points or a, a, a a two year essentially master's program. This is something that master's programs throughout the country are going to have to do. So you'll find it's across the board um, and so that means that as of uh, the first session 2015 the program will be longer and that's why I, I was mentioning it before. Um, there will be um, seven standard eight point subjects, two four point subjects and the total and, and, um, uh, and the electives which have, it's essentially the electives that have been extended so you can, you still will have the same number of subjects in the core um, but the electives will now be doubled essentially. Um, there, we, with that we hope that we're going to bring some opportunities that haven't um, happened before and which means that people often found, and I must say, found the master program being short that there were subjects that they wished they could have done but they couldn't because time was, um, uh, you know, the, the shorter length program meant that they couldn't do them. So we often had people asking us questions about doing subjects or doing an extra subject or whatever. Now um, one of the new th uh, requirements also is that we have a capstone subject in a master's program. Um, some of you may have heard about AQF, um, Australian Qualifications Framework and that requires all master's programs to have a capstone. So we have actually introduced a capstone um, and into the core, and this is probably too much information for you now, but 
uh, I'm going to tell you anyway, we have also introduced um, a subject called INF 404 Foundations for Information Studies because up until now um, we haven't had a nice orientation subject to get people involved in the course and in the industry. So um, we're pretty excited about that and that's a, a direct result both of student feedback and um, our industry um, engagement that we, we conducted a little while ago. Um, there are no more points uh, or no more subjects in the core. We have just exchanged one subject for another. So, and this is a brand, INF 404 is a brand new subject and it's looking fantastic at the, mo at the moment. Um, now, I'll try and answer the question about the grad dip in just a minute. Uh, now, um, these are the specialisations and these specialisations haven't changed. Um, so you can see the range is fantastic. Oh, um, we've got applied research, children's librarianship, community informatics, information architecture, information and knowledge management, librarianship, library leadership and records and archives management. Three of these are common with the undergraduate graduate degree and the remainder aren't, um, which means that um, if you were to move from the, the this into the MIS, you could also pick up another uh, specialisation that you hadn't undertaken before. And for those people who are moving straight into the MIS, the range of specialisations is such that you can really tailor your program to where your interests lie. Can I just reiterate though that um, uh, the specialisations that are, uh, are there, you can only do one specialisation, you can't do two. Um, some people do ask me that. Um, and so, and those specialisations remain the same. Um, and the, um, uh, it's just the construction of that for 2015 that will change. Once again, because of the addition of, um, of uh, extra subjects. So this is what the course will look like. Um, so very long and complicated in terms of um, how it will work. But essentially you, you will be required to undertake an, some additional subjects. Um, one of those will be the capstone, the compulsory capstone subject. Um, there is one exception to this and this format and that is that the research um, specialisation um, is um, going to be constructed completely differently to the, rem the remaining subjects, uh, sorry, specialisations. So there are two 16 point subjects and one 32 point subject. It's a very intensive um, research specialisation and um, there are grade point average requirements for entry into that um, stream as well. But if any of them, uh, um, uh, any of you are looking at um, uh, research, it's going to provide a really strong um, research um, area. Um, someone's asked what community informatics is and that's, um, it used to, it, it was, um, a, so it's something that we're constructing around the idea of community engagement, allowing people um, access to information, looking at the politics of information, the structures of information um, and, uh, and a whole lot of other things. Um, I can give you an idea of uh, some of the subjects in that subjectalisation if I shuffle through my, my papers because I don't know them off by heart. Um, so we've got social networking for information professionals and community informatics which is the, the two core subjects, uh, knowledge management, web publishing, information services around the world, community out outreach and project management. So it's a, a really a, a subject that's a, a, a subject, a specialisation and a subject um, that looks at engaging the community and um, in all its various forms and it's not just about libraries. So I think that's an important um, thing um, to note. 
Um, I'm just going. I'm just having a quick look at the questions. You've done your grad, a graduate diploma in information in 2006, semester in semester in 2000. Will I receive full credits to continue? There, I'll, we'll have to look at your application um, because there is a five-year um, uh, limit on those. So it will depend very much on how you've been working, Virginia. Um, now, how long you've been working in the industry, what, you know, what sort of recent experience. So I can assess that when I have a look at the application. But as a rule, there's um, a sort of a five-year uh, thing to do with when the qualification um, was completed. Plus, we look at in, um, industry experience. So if those two things are, are going together, because um, as you can imagine, the um, world has changed somewhat, um, even since 2006. So we need to to bear those sorts of things in mind. So lots of stuff about specialisations. The specialisations will have some, you know, some interesting stuff in them. Um, but the major thing to consider is that the program for the Masters of Information Studies will um, be lengthened according to government requirements um, and we will introduce a capstone subject. Um, the current 2014, this is the sort of thing you would look like, uh, your study would look like. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to say at the moment because we have only, as I said, I literally only um, end of last week and we're still working on the current structure so I can't really show you what the future will look like for a little while yet but of course if you need to know, um, just email me and let me know. Now the most important thing I think here is that there are no exams with any of the programs. Um, it is not a, um, a an exam based um, course and, or pro a program or n none of them are and so most of our assessment etc tends to be um, around the idea of um, uh, projects, um, uh, essays, um, various other strategies that involve a participation perhaps in forums or um, in you know occasionally in group work impossible as that um, uh, might might sound uh, the beginning of semester two you're out testing me I've got five pieces of paper working now um, it is mid July so I think Robin can correct me I think it's the 14th of July looking at a little bit um, uh, bit of paper, scrap of paper I've got here. So no exams um, and um, that seems to please most people. Um, just uh, the questions, I've just addressed a couple of common questions. Um, all your materials online, everything that you need. Um, the expectation is that um, it's between 8 to 10 hours of study a week uh, for each subject. That will vary, and it will also vary on in your in terms of your um, expertise, um, because some people are more expert at some things, especially if they've been working in the industry for a while, um, or if you have a bit background in another industry. You, you know, so those subjects might take you uh, invest you. You know, you have less time to need to invest less time, whereas ones that are completely um, unfamiliar might take more time. We do find that to, to um, do the program properly, that is about your commitment of time and that is why we're very careful when we're talking about how many subjects you can do. Um, we do lots, just to, to make you feel a little bit better about in terms of um, interactivity, we use a lot of strategies. People use systems like we're using at the moment. Um, they use podcasts, podcasts, they hold um, sort of town, you know, town hall conversations, um, they record, they use Second Life um, classrooms, that we do everything. Um, so we have um, a real variety of ways of making contact with you. And the other thing is, in recent years, um, or as in the last year and this year, um, I have been making an effort to ensure that we run face-to-face um, uh, -face sessions in at least uh, during our study visits, 
um, so open sessions so anyone who, even if you're not on a study visit, you can meet up with the staff in a city at that time and we've been holding social events, we've been holding workshops, orientation sessions, um, tours. Um, last week we went on a tour of the Supreme Court Library of Victoria and that was fantastic and then we had a social wine and cheese afterwards which was fun. Um, and uh, so all very um, um, useful and uh, you get to put a human face to us. Um, we assume you have internet access and so I have had one person who um, enrolled and only got internet access an hour a day. It was quite difficult for her to study so that might be something to, to start thinking about. Um, you need to have a look at our admissions information and, and that's the sort of area that Robin might be able to um, help you with but be very sure that you're applying to the appropriate course depending on your qualification. So just make sure of that and I've, I've got a feeling Robin you might be able to say this, we don't need certified um, uh, copies of qualifications anymore, is that right? Can you, um, now, someone just said regional cities, depends on the region. Um, we have a fantastic um, uh, group called the DE Outreach Team who have been uh, really um, uh, grown this year and they travel all over um, the eastern um, part of Australia and delivering workshops, um, orientation sessions, uh, study skills sessions and we have been piggybacking uh, backing on those um, uh, in terms of if they are, for example, I offered to go, I'm in Melbourne, to Ballarat and Bendigo a couple of weeks ago um, and now I only go if someone needs to meet up with me but I'm happy to do that if that should happen. Um, the same with other um, regional areas in other states. If there's a staff member who's close by, um, then we will um, have. Now I don't know anything about the limitations of browsers and operating systems, Stephen, but someone else might, so I'll get to see if someone else um, answer, can answer that. I've just lost my headphones. Okay. Um, now, uh, applications for credit considered on a case-by-case -case basis but there is a standard agreement between accredited library technician programs and the university. There are an, a couple of places around that are unaccredited, um, we know who they are so if you do, uh, had your library technician qualification from one of them just please contact me so I can um, uh, suss, suss it out essentially. Um, but by and large most diplomas are coming out of accredited, earlier accredited organisations so they're, they're fine and you will get a standard credit package. A few of you may have the advanced diploma which uh, has a little um, bit more um, credit involved as well. And then uh, those of you in the master's degrees, there's some other bits and pieces that you think may be appropriate, you know, you might have picked up, I get quite a few people who pick up a subject at Open University to test test out the, the program and then of course they immediately come to us because we're so fantastic. Um, but, you know, we do have a few arrangements like that as well. So, and the other one of course people ask me about is professional placement. So just case by case basis in most instances. Fees. Now a big um, uh, rider here because as we are aware things are changing here considerably. So while this is as it stands, um, we'll um, uh, uh, know that this is probably going to change in the future and you will know probably about the changes like us. Um, so just keep an eye out for that, that's, that's something in the works and of course out of our hands but uh, for the moment so just keep you know, your, your eyes peeled for any changes that might occur there. Um, I must say Commonwealth supported places, we do have them um, and so often it's, it's worthwhile um, applying so, uh, and see if you can get one of those because we have a number. Um, same with the Masters and with the other programs um, and so I, I mean I don't want to stress the fees too much because of the changes in the year um, but this is as they stand on our um, 
at other courses at the moment. Um, and once again, we do have Commonwealth supported places and they're worth also applying for. Um, there are some scholarships, mostly for um, a, a residential school, which is um, a residential school equity grant, grants, which are, uh, because we have the residential school, are handy for the, the um, uh, biz people. And um, uh, you can have a look for other things on our um, website that might be available, depending on your circumstances. Um, Virginia, discounts, I am uncertain about this. Um, Robin, you may know. Um, the, I think you're talking about the 10% for upfront fees. Um, I'll let Robin answer that question. Um, because as I said, we're in a bit of a state of change at the moment. Um, we have various closing dates, but if you're unsure about that, just let us know um, and we'll fill you in with, the, with dates and, and um, we tend to have rolling dates. So just um, let us know, but the next one is coming up soon. Um, official transcripts, um, if you have overseas qualifications, um, that is something that we may need to, to look at and um, uh, the um, uh, and assess it accordingly. Okay, so there's some information, my contact phone number and also my um, email address and I'll leave that up on the screen. I hope you can see it. Um, I think, and that's also our, web, our website of course and some beautiful Char uh, Harry Potter flying books. Um, I'll just leave it a few minutes and give people a chance to um, ask some questions if they wish to and um, and then if, if there are no further questions um, then uh, the um, then we'll finish uh, touring two subjects is not a full-time load um, doing three subjects is uh, it, it depends on um, I suppose what the question is. We suggest that two subjects um, is is a enough for work for someone who is working or um, has family commitments. But a f um, uh, an, a um, full time allot allotment would be four subjects. We occasionally let people do three, which is seventy five percent and which also means that people um, can um, apply for support, etc. Um, when we do play placement, can we choose the location or do you, um, you both. We can find you a place or we can um, uh, uh, let you find one and we'll do the organising. Um, we're trying to encourage a few more um, uh, people to you know look for, for places, but we have a, a great um, uh, a number of places that we can use. Oh, they were going fast and. Um, I, the Virginia, the application uh, will come to me anyway, so I'm the person who will look at it. So, um, yep, Robin's just confirmed. So I will look at it. It will come to me. So that's okay. Uh, question about residential schools with Strum only. When might uh, not, not be within? Going back, um, I don't know. I, th I think I don't think I understand, Stephen. So. Um, the residential school you can do in another session, um, but I will need to talk to you about um, um, what we can do. It might be that. We do have some alternate arrangements in place, um, some um, options for people who just cannot attend, um, but you still would need to enrol in it. So it's something I can chat to you about by email or whatever or on the phone. <laughs> I'm glad, Virginia. I'm always anxious about the webinars. I think they're great too. And just referring back to full-time load, Robin has answered about the um, 
subjects, which is what I said, 75% or three subjects I should have said it talking. Last chance for some more questions. <laughs> the study, eight to 10 hours was an estimate. Um, it, as I said, it really depends, it does depend on um, the subject, your expertise, your background, those sorts of things. But if we, if you consider reading the online component, which often only makes up a small part, and then participating perhaps in um, uh, the uh, you know face to face um, virtual face to face activities, it can take time. Uh, residential school, we have um, our own accommodation on site, and there are a lot of motels in Wagga because I often have to stay in them, um, but they're pretty uh, pricey at times, so you just need to book well in advance. But I suggest probably the cheapest option is um, uh, accommodation. Um, yep, staying on some campus as well. So, um, and that's always interesting because you get to, to really get up close and personal with the, your fellow students and get to know them a bit better. Robin's even got the prices for the accommodation. Um, you've been accepted uh, already and um, once you've accepted you should be able to get into, you won't be able to see the subjects yet, you'll see what you're enrolled in. Um, most of your book list uh, information you will get um, about, I think we open up um, a week before the start of session. Um, <laughs> and um, so you'll get your idea. Um, are there many students enrolled in the MIRS? We've got about nearly 700. Um, I've been in this role, Virginia, Virginia, I feel that we know each other, um, for a year and a half. Um, yeah, I think perhaps uh, <laughs> with the baby, the, um, if, if that's the case, yes, I think maybe the motel is the best option. So, yeah, what any recommendations? I've stayed in nearly um, uh, all of them, so let me know. Uh, applications for 2015, I'll let Robin answer because I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and Stephen, goodbye. <laughs> go in August. Okay, now if you have any more questions, my email as I said is there and you can also, most of this information is on the website, so feel free to have a look. I think it's time for us to all go and, and live our lives. So thank you all for attending. Oops, a couple of questions. List of textbooks, as I said before, will come through in the uh, about a week before you'll get access to your Interact site, and that's when um, you'll have access to um, a subject outline which includes all of that information. Okay, if that's all, I think we can finish. That was wonderful. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>